Greetings, magical mavens. We are back for part two of our winter decorating vlog. So the last one was the first vlog I've done in like a year. And I got a lot of comments saying that you guys really enjoyed the crafting and even the fact that it was a vlog. So I figured we would come back and do part two. So in the first video, we changed those trees from fall decor to this sort of cross between fall and winter because we got a huge snowstorm here in the middle of November. And I thought, why not sort of tie in with what I'm seeing outside with what I'm creating inside. So now it is full blown December and we are going to be updating these to get rid of the fall vibes. But I'm gonna actually leave that for today because there's other areas of the house that desperately need to be redecorated first. Case in point, my altar. This is disgraceful, you guys. As lovely as this altar has been, I started the process of this altar way back around August Eve, also known as Lamas or Lunasa. As you can see, I was able to get away with this scheme all the way through November's Eve slash Halloween, but now it just really, really needs to go. I normally don't let my altar go for this long, but it's just been a really busy time and it's been pretty hectic, so this has been neglected. So full disclosure guys, part of the reason why I haven't done much with this altar in a while is because for the past, most of the past year, I have had a morning practice where I would come and do a little something at this altar every day. But after a while, to be honest, I didn't really enjoy standing up at this tall table every morning and I've been craving something a little bit more relaxed and sit down so I've been doing more just like meditating in bed or reading at my couch or even doing like a card reading or something sitting down on the couch and so I feel like this area can now be evolved into something that's more of a decorative and symbolic altar more so than like a working altar since I'm kind of not feeling the vibe on that. Another disclosure about why I've left this up for so long is because to be perfectly honest with you guys, I don't know what I want to do, you know? And so I think sometimes it's necessary to actually just start doing something, even if you don't know what you're going to do yet. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply clean this off and give it a blank canvas. I think once this clutter is cleared away, I'll be able to look at it with much more clarity and inspiration. So let's get to it. We've got a fresh start for the altar. And the next step is to figure out where all of this stuff actually belongs for the rest of the year and return it to its rightful place. All right, so what have we got here? This, believe it or not, is actually a headband. So that's gonna go with like costumes and stuff like that. The grapes, I'm sure I can use for other seasonal decor. So things that might cross over into the current season or things that are kind of timeless can all just go into a pile. So my cauldron here fits in that category. We'll just put those aside. 
Cornucopias, guys. Is it appropriate ever to use a cornucopia outside of the context of harvest season? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not the... Oh, we've got a friend. I'm not the most um, traditional person. I'm not afraid to break the rules, but I don't know if I necessarily feel like it fits the vibe. So I think I'm going to put this away for the season along with the corn. And I don't think I'm going to be needing this fake cabbage until springtime. So I actually put this out for the late summer and early fall, honestly, because where I live, especially where I'm just gardening on a patio that actually has a 10 foot awning over it, I wasn't really harvesting that many leaves, leaf vegetables until the later harvest season. But sometimes this can be cute. I know most people use this for spring stuff. So if I decide I wanna do use that for spring, we will see. I'm gonna put those aside with things that are being put away for now. Now we're gonna quickly shift over here because guys, in the last video, we talked about how my cat likes to eat. Oh, here he comes now. We talked about how my cat likes to eat things like this. He actually uses this stuff as dental floss. Look, he's gonna he's going for this stuff now. So I, this especially, because I feel like that could be really dangerous and horribly annoying. One time I had a long one of these and he destroyed it. Um, so yeah, I can't leave these on the floor for any amount of time unsupervised because does anyone else's cat eat stuff like this? Someone else said that their cat eats their decor as well, but I, I thought that my cat was crazy. All right, so the floral arrangements are definitely going to be disassembled. So I think I'm just going to actually move these into my office slash studio to work on later because I'm going to want to kind of carefully take these apart and uh, put the items either in with my craft supplies or in with my out of season seasonal decor. So let's just put that in the going away pile for now. Okay, this was a book that I was using for height on my altar. We can go ahead and put that back where it belongs on the shelf. Also, let me know, guys, do you want me to do a library tour? I, I kind of just put that down randomly. I think it actually goes underneath here, and I can't do it with one hand. But I think recently I've gotten a few requests for a library tour. So if you want me to talk about what is on here, I can and how I organize my books because other than a few things like that one that might be slightly out of place, both this shelf and that shelf are both actually alphabetized. All right, so this is actually a journal that was gifted to me from Ashira Star Goddess on YouTube. She has a brand called Level Up and she gave me this lovely journal. So this is another video that you guys might wanna see, let me know, but I recently tried making a fire cider for the first time for the winter and fall season. And I figured I would use this journal since it's like a really neat journal and my other journals are like very messy and sort of artsy. I thought this would be a good one to just document um, like potions and herbal notes and stuff since I think it'll be a little bit easier to organize in here. But yeah, I did end up making the fire cider and I did take videos of it. So let me know if that's something you would wanna see. For now, I'm just gonna put this over here in the place of doom. <laughs> <laughs> my coffee table is where books that I'm like partially reading and this is my like binder grimoire this is where stuff like that ends up I actually bought this thrifted magazine thing to keep stuff like that in but I never seem to remember to put it in there and I got a workbook in here that's getting smashed I don't know guys I might need a little bit of a different system but it seemed to make sense at the time my astrology chart. I refer to that frequently. This is actually an old school Harry Potter thing from way back in the day before the movies came out. But yeah, I need to organize that, but we're not going to do it in this video. These are some things that I was working on at my altar in the past season. For right now, I'm going to stick them in here as well. They're probably going to ultimately end up in there though. Now this guy he pretty much makes it into every altar setup, so I might as well just go ahead and put him back and we'll see how everything else gets arranged around him. This came from a card pull that I did months and months ago and it was super relevant at the time. I think it remains to be relevant, but for right now it's time to put this back. So let's just, uh, there we go. 
stick him in there. Alright, now here are some things that can easily cross over into the new season. We can, we can just continue working with these little nature gifts here. I, I think I'm actually going to do some crafts with these with you guys if you want to make some ornaments and some fun things like that. These fall leaves, uh, you know, they preserved so well. I'm almost tempted to keep them in my office in case I ever have like a fall themed product that I'm photographing out of season. I feel like these would be fun to like keep in a jar or something and uh, pull out as needed. All right, so everything else here is stuff that, well, not these guys, these are seasonal. Everything else here is stuff that is not necessarily seasonal. I'm almost even tempted to keep our little corn dollies up outside of the harvest season because aren't there corn dolly vibes for almost every sabbat right like even like in bulk you could do these um they're kind of seasonless so let's put these on the altar for right now and maybe we can kind of dress them up a little bit differently so that they fit in with the winter vibes so yeah i think the rest of these my little god and goddess statues my pendulum there's a candle there there's some rune stones there that I use symbolically, my little magic wand that I use to carve candles, my candle snuffer. Those things I think I'm gonna actually put back on the altar. I have four of these little cups representing the elements. And actually, I think I'm gonna put these away for now because currently I'm, I'm not really using them in that way anymore. In fact, some of them, are currently a part of this tablescape. So I think we're gonna confiscate these for now, uh, repurpose them in the kitchen and dining room for now and I'll find another representation for the altar if I do decide that I want to do elemental representations on the next altar. So I was just going up to that repurposed Sephora bag to put the headband in there and I remembered there might be something in here that can actually help us now. Let's see. Yes, guys, I, I do have a, a handmade headband for every season because that's me. Let's see, here's what I'm looking for. Ha ha. This is, I could literally just do the exact same thing that I did with that one and make it sort of look like a floral arrangement coming out of the vintage cauldron. So let's take that out and put these back in. So this is as far as I've gotten putting that cauldron there. I'm still not feeling super inspired as to what I want to do with this yet. So I'm gonna to turn to my trusty, trusty magical tool, Pinterest, to get some ideas. But I am just gonna take a quick look and see like, what do I know for sure that I definitely wanna do? I wanna take down that thing. Cause that doesn't, this actually doesn't match my decor at all anymore. I used to have a lot more purple and now I have mostly blue as my main all year round decor so I'm probably going to repaint this and maybe even repurpose it into something useful and I definitely want to cover up that old like 90s or 80s air conditioner uh it's ugly the wall underneath it is ugly and it actually I'm realizing has a little bit of a draft so what I did last year was I put a sort of tapestry thing over it and I'm going to definitely be doing that again this year for winter all right so I just went into my linen cupboard and I found this sheer white curtain thing. It already has safety pins on it so I'm guessing this is the same one that I used last year. There's just a little bit of like a lip at the top of this or like a rim on it and I just opened the safety pins and just kind of use them as hooks. It's primitive but it gets the job done. The sad truth is you can kind of 
clearly see the safety pins. So I'm probably gonna put like a garland or something over that, but overall, doesn't that just look so much better? I think as always, just because it's me and that's my style, I'm probably gonna lean into the sort of gold, astrological sort of vibe. It's definitely easy to find things like that because there's that sort of like Star of Bethlehem vibe that some people do for Christmas. So you can always find like different ornaments and decor that fit into like a celestial theme for pagan Yule, if that's what you're into. I definitely like the lantern vibe and I do have a few different options for lanterns that can be incorporated on the altar. Now I do think I like where I was going with having seasonal floral arrangements on the altar. I don't actually like this one. I think I just pinned it because I liked the container that it was in and some of the foliage at the bottom, but I think I'm definitely going to lean back into that as well because nothing really illustrates the season like a representation of the type of plants or nature items that would be available that time of year. So I do like these really cozy scenes here and I actually have a vintage teapot like that. I could even do the arrangement for the altar inside of that teapot. I don't know if I'm going to end up implementing that, but that that's a potential idea. So this actually reminded me that when I was a child, I used to love snowflake necklaces and I have a few snowflake charms that I've had since childhood that I could definitely bring into my winter solstice altar. They're really small, so it might not even be an obvious decoration per se, but it's like an object, a magical talisman type thing that I could definitely bring into it. And as always, when all else fails, going for a bookish theme always works well for me because I do have books of all different shapes, sizes, and colors. Sadly, I don't have any vintage books that are quite that ornate, but this just reminds me that if I'm lacking for ideas with my altar, I can definitely bring in like some red and green books to create height and color aesthetic on the altar. Here's a green example. So full disclosure, guys, you know, I sometimes like to talk about human design and other than just your type and strategy, you also have just other things that you can learn about yourself from the human design system. And one thing that I've discovered about myself that makes so much sense is that I have an open head center. And an open head center is someone who can see inspiration in practically anything. Like other people might look at the world and see no magic whatsoever in certain situations, but I can see inspiration almost anywhere. However, I don't really have totally original ideas. Like a lot of you guys think that I'm so creative and I'm so innovative, right? I'm an Aquarius, so I'm innovative and I am, but it's also really just that I'm resourceful. I look around and I see potential ideas in everything and then I just sort of translate them and implement them in ways that people wouldn't have necessarily thought to do before. So Pinterest is my best friend. So now that I have my ideas from Pinterest, now I'm just gonna go around my house and look for things that could sort of fit the themes that I liked from Pinterest and I'm just gonna create a sort of collage with it on my altar. One thing that usually happens is I end up gathering more inspiration than I actually need or I'm able to use in one project. So some of these ideas will end up getting implemented in other areas, like perhaps on my coffee table if I ever clean that, or on the tablescape, or when I remake the trees, or just, you know, other stuff in general. But it's good to just kind of collect everything that I have, put it in one spot, and then start working with those tools. So I forgot to show it on Pinterest, but I actually came across one of my old pins about a blog post, and in that picture was this vintage candelabra before it was cleaned, <laughs> so it looked very different. But it reminded me that one of the biggest themes of the winter solstice is candlelight or firelight. And so I think I'm gonna bring this guy into almost the centerpiece of the altar this time. So let's grab that. Now this one is conveniently already out, but here's a perfect example of a book to put on the altar. I even think I'm gonna confiscate some things from my studio altar. The studio altar is kind of like a fake altar that I use to photograph things. So here's 
a sneak peek actually at something that my patrons are going to be getting soon which is some of my favorite spells and like book of shadows page forms so i'm really excited about that just did a photo shoot i am gonna leave this fake ivy because it really really does make just this very simple setup look very magical so i'm really enjoying using that for quick photo shoots but i am going to confiscate this ivy candle holder for now i'm also going to raid my shop here so these are some things that are not for sale yet that i'm looking to you know contextualize in a photo shoot and add to my shop so these things are fair game because like i said sometimes showing how something is actually used by sort of decorating with it myself for a season is the perfect way to market something so this is a refurbished cellulite cellulite selenite candle holder i think this will be perfect for the winter solstice and you know sometimes the most simple things are the best things to put on an altar so i might also just put this card that i received recently from my friend Tanae. i love how she actually managed to find a thing that says solstice season instead of christmas maybe she had this made i'll have to ask but that'll be a nice way to just kind of bring that winter wonderland sort of vibe into it because like i said even though we had an epic winter storm in November. It is no longer wintry out there. It's just cold. So this will be a nice way to sort of bring that vibe back for now until our next storm. And now we scour for aesthetic books. Now there is no rule about what the book is about. <laughs> as long as it's the right colors, it's fair game. So we got a Spiderwick Chronicles right here. That's perfect actually. Look at that. Grimm's fairy tales, a nice vintage copy. I'm definitely going to lean more into green than red because I just like green and it's very versatile. It has just a naturey sort of look to it that works whether or not you happen to be a big fan of red for example which i'm i'm kind of not i'm wearing red today because i'm trying to activate my root chakra get more grounded and kind of do a little shadow work around like why has red not been my favorite color it's a fine color so we are going to bring some red in today but yeah I, i'm seeing a little bit of a an aesthetic forming here this vintage gypsy sorcery and fortune telling book is perfect Perfect. Homer's Odyssey, a very old copy. That's perfect. All right, I think that's going to be it for books. In the past, I have done epic stacks of books that were huge on the altar, but I already have so many other things that I might want to put on there. We don't need to bring in gold in, for, in the form of books because we have other gold objects. We don't need every single green book or red book that I have for this particular design. So I think we are ready to get started, guys. Also, if I'm being perfectly honest, it is a pain to pull all the books out and then kind of have to put them back. I do have a technology system that helps me to organize them alphabetically, but it is just kind of annoying when I take down an altar to have to like, that's part of why I sometimes procrastinate about taking down an altar because it's like, now I got to put all the books away. So let's just use a few this time instead of going crazy. And here are the rejects from the last video when I was trying to avoid making it look too, too wintry since it was still November. But now this kind of stuff is fair game. I also recently found this really cool astrological sundial at a thrift store. And I might actually use this almost as like a representation of the wheel of the year on my altar. And maybe I'll put like a crystal or something on the Sagittarius one and then the Capricorn one to represent the time of year that we're in. We'll see if there's room for it. It's kind of huge. All right, so at this point, all that's left to do is just organize this chaos. I'm just gonna be moving this stuff around, adding and removing things until I've come up with a setup that feels magical to me. So here we go. guys I don't think that the corn dollies are fitting in here so I might bring them to the kitchen actually because there is kind of an ongoing harvest theme going on in my kitchen year-round 
So let's move them there. I don't want to put them away because this is actually part of an active spell. Uh, I don't think it needs to be on the seasonal altar anymore. So we're going to move these guys. So this is usually a dilemma that comes up at some point. I just have too many things <laughs> to actually fit. And obviously we don't want this candle to be too close to that. I'm never gonna leave it burning unattended anyway. If anything, I'll just light it a, for taking pictures and videos, let's be real here. But also, you know, if I'm standing here doing a little candle meditation and I'm literally staring at the flame, so we don't need to worry about that. But we don't need to like pack this area with various different candles. What I liked about this one when I did my Yule intention setting ritual that I was reminded of on Pinterest is that it has three candles, which can represent past, present, and future. So we don't really need this lantern even though i love the sort of aesthetic of this for the winter solstice we're just gonna be <gasps> oh i didn't break it <laughs> goodness gracious guys welcome to my life this is just going to be used as decor we don't need it to be on the altar so taking that away so i would like to incorporate all three of these larger gold items to kind of tie everything together, but it doesn't really make sense the way it's currently laid out. I usually like to do something somewhat symmetrical. I do want the sun to be in the middle, but I also want the candle to be in the middle. That can be off to the side, perhaps with something else to balance it out. So this is where height comes into play. So this is where I would go in with something like either the stack of books or this thing here which originally was like a warmer, like you would put a candle here and there was a glass drink container on here. Sadly, the drink container has now broken, <laughs> but it is a cool thing that I like to use for height on my altar now. So I'm just gonna put him up so that he can be behind the candles and then hopefully it'll all tie together much better. So I really wanted to like this idea because this does provide a barrier between the candles and the curtain as well. And so it would have served dual functions, but it just doesn't look good. It just doesn't look good. So it's time to come up with another plan. Okay, so I don't hate this actually. I really thought I wanted the candles to be in the middle, but I'm realizing that's not entirely necessary. I do sort of like the idea of having the sun in the center. He is typically in the center of every arrangement. So what I do want to do just to kind of balance out this side and that side is I do want to add some height over here so that it at least kind of has this sort of symmetrical shape to it. So I'm realizing I don't want to put this one too far into a stack of books because honestly, I do like to refer to this winter solstice book throughout the season. I read this whole thing, I think I read half of it several years ago, and then I read through the entire thing last year, and it is such a good book. I, I highly recommend, oh, there's some dried flowers. I highly recommend this book. It is, I don't know if the people who wrote this are pagan per se or not, but they definitely have a pagan flair where they literally go through every different winter solstice tradition from all around the world and they also explain what it has to do with christmas and there's some fun pagan sort of activities and history and traditions in here uh, so this is a really fun one to sort of get out of the usual perspective of christmas or even yule so i might just put this one on the altar but we'll see let's take that one out for now I like where this is going. I'm not too sure how I feel about the fact that there's only one random red book in there. I want to say that aesthetically I like it with just green, but I feel like I totally neglected red last year because like I said, I went for a winter wonderland slash 
celestial theme for last year, which was all blue and no reds. But I will wait to take that one out until the end because we might tie in some other reds, we'll see. It does kind of look good from this angle where you can see the reds on that arrangement as well as there. And I'll see if I can tie in some, some more red in the altar itself. I'm gonna put this goddess statue here. One, just because she fits so perfectly into this. I'm guessing this was like a Catholic type thing. I found this at a thrift store, but it perfectly fits my Saraswati statue, which I like to keep as a feminine representation to sort of balance out the masculine image of the sun that's always on my altar. So that is perfect. And I also love that it balances out the white. So you've got white candles in a gold frame, and then you have a white statue and a gold archway. This does look really good right here, honestly. And conveniently enough, pointing it in this sort of symmetrical direction does put Sagittarius season, which it currently is, at the front, and then we'll have Capricorn and Aquarius. All right, so I'm definitely not thinking that this guy is gonna make it in. This is something that's more likely gonna end up again on the tablescape or on the coffee table. So let's, let's take that one aside. I do love this for the winter solstice, but we don't need another candle on that side. We could use another candle on this side, but then there's like a lot of green on this side and no green on that side. So I feel like if I'm gonna do that, I'm definitely gonna need to tie in some green on this side. Or maybe it could go in the middle. Um, we'll see that. We'll see how that looks with a candle in it. No. <laughs> So I do want to put some kind of like garland around there, but the sad truth is I'm actually not feeling blue at all for this altar right now, which is total opposite from last year. So I'm going to need to remove these. I think they're just wired on. So I'll see if I can remove those and then put that around there. Not going to lie, I was so worried that I had like permanently wired those on, but sometimes I just end up giving my past self a lot of credit once I realized that she already had me covered. Past Fiora knew that I was going to want to reuse that without the blue baubles, and so I just ended up making them with these little wires on them. So they came right off. Thank you, Past Fiora. I was thinking, like, I don't think I'm going to end up using the blue at all this year, but actually I can because I've never done this before, but I might decorate my bedroom. And currently my bedroom does have a blue theme. So maybe this year I'll just put little things like this around in my bedroom to sort of bring in the winter solstice vibes in here without getting rid of the color scheme that I already have. So I found these picks that I made last year. Most of them do have blue things permanently on them. This one just has a ribbon though, so we can definitely use that. This one has like a green bobble on it, so we can definitely use that. This one has purple on it, which didn't even really match last year. But since in the gardening realm, they call purple things blue, I thought maybe I could get away with it. I actually don't like this. So I'm probably gonna paint these red to tie in a little bit more red on the altar. And these ones will just get saved for the bedroom. And lunch today shall be the last supper at this tablescape. I will enjoy it one last time. All right, lunch has been had. I've got a nice little makeshift wassail here. It's probably not what really went in wassail, but something similar. And it's time to get back to this altar. All right, so while I was having lunch, these were drying. They're not perfect, but you know, berries don't look perfect in real life, so we're just gonna roll with it. And these I'm gonna stick in here to help tie in the red vibes that are happening over here.
this is actually coming together into a relatively like simple altar for me. I feel like my altars are usually a lot more busy than this, but I kind of like it. It's like simple and it gets the point across. So now that all that's really left to do is to place my small little figurines and symbolic images. So I've got my Bast statue over here. Let's put her on this side. These guys are both part of the Hindu pantheon, so I guess I'll put them together. Got my little Buddha over here. Let's put him over here. This selenite theme works really well because it looks like ice. So to sort of balance out that selenite, I'll put my selenite pendulum over here. I just put this little besom broom on all of my altars so that can go right here. And then these little tools, I guess, can just go right here. Keeping this real simple today. What do you think, guys? Is that too simple? <laughs> I think I kind of like it. It's like very simplistic for me. And honestly, I think I might actually have to leave this on the altar because I really like the way it looks. The only downside of it is it's silver and everything else is gold, but eh, rules are for fools. Realistically though, I'm sure I'm not gonna leave this on the altar because I'm really loving drinking out of this. Little story time here. This was a thrifted vintage cup that I found from the 70s. And I know that because it had someone's name engraved on here in fancy letters and it said, 1973 or whatever and I wanted to get it as an experiment to see if the tools that my partner gave me would allow me to remove things like that and then repurpose and resell these as my chalice candles. This one was the experiment. I don't think I would sell this one because it does look very wonky now but we kind of tested our tools to see what our capabilities are and personally I just happen to love this cup like this is my cup now <laughs> so I like the slight quirks in it but that was a fun little experiment so realistically since I do drink out of that cup what I'm probably going to end up doing is making a chalice candle in another one of these and putting that on the altar because it does really look good like right there almost to balance out where the selenite candle holder is. So let's go ahead and actually pop that in there. And I think the last step is just to bring in some pine cones. So let's grab a couple of these. Just place them around. And actually, as a finishing touch, I'm realizing that since that cornucopia is gone, I'm probably much better putting that on the front. All right, guys, so that is my winter solstice altar. I really hope that inspired you. And we're not gonna tackle everything else in this video because I don't know why I ever think that we're gonna get through more than one project in a vlog style video. I talk too much. There's way too much to explain about this project and it would just be too long of a video. So 
I do invite you to come back. We will still be doing those other projects we talked about, just not today. <laughs> this lovely tablescape. I'm almost sad to see this one go. This area over here. And lastly, we are gonna tackle this absolutely shameful area over here. I had every intention to have some kind of seasonal like drink station set up here, but the sad truth is that I've just been so busy with other things that this has been nothing but like a seasonal decor workstation for months and it really needs to go and actually be turned into what it was supposed to be. And we're also going to be switching this wreath out for a more wintry one. I actually made this wreath. If you guys would like to see me make a winter version of this sort of natural witchy type of wreath, let me know and we can do that in a video coming up. Oh yeah, and I didn't forget about the idea of putting a garland up there. I just realized I don't have a garland that I want to use right now. And I do wanna do a video where we do make a garland together. So I invite you to come back <laughs> for the finishing touch up there. So solstice blessings to you. I hope you're having a magical winter solstice season so far, and I will see you in the next one. Hey there, it's future Afira from the next morning actually adding some rough quartz crystals that I forgot were in the bathroom that I used in last year's winter altar that I think would be really nice, maybe even just behind the candelabra there. Don't mind me, this is what happens. The altar does continue to evolve throughout the season, so case in point.